going on? Today we are here with another Player Spotlight Series video, this time on Billy Gibbons. That's right, Billy Gibbons of ZZ Top. Now, Billy was born William Frederick Gibbons, December 16th, 1949, in the Tanglewood neighborhood of Houston, Texas. Billy talks about Texas in a lot of his songs, and he attributes his style to being Texan. But anyway, <clears throat> Billy's parents, uh, his father's name was Frederick, his mother's name was Lorraine. Now, his father, um, he was an entertainer. He worked for MGM, and he was a con uh, concert pianist and a orchestra conductor. Not much info on his mother. I assume she was just a housewife, because back then, people could afford to only have one income. Not anymore. But anyway, um, Billy has a really unique style, uh, blues and rock, and he's one of the best out there. He's got a very unique style, like I said, and some of the things he does, he's got some signature licks. You know, he does a lot of this. Just, you know, real simple stuff, but he's really, really tight. Now, when Billy plays, he doesn't use a guitar pick like most every other guitar player. He uses a five peso coin. It's got to be really hard on his strings, I would think. And speaking of strings, Billy doesn't use regular guitar strings. You know, most guys that play guitar use nines, tens, maybe elevens. Some guys go a little heavier, but Billy uses sevens. Seven is his thin E string to 38 on his thick E string. That is paper thin. I remember trying some eights um, back in my teenage years. And I broke two of them trying to put them on. I didn't know what I was doing back then, but I, I know what they felt like, so I can't imagine what seven gauge strings must feel like. Now, Billy has his own custom uh, guitar line. Well, may, I, I don't know if he's a manufacturer or what, but um, Reverend Willie G guitar strings. Those are Billy made by Billy Gibbons. Now, he doesn't build them himself. I'm sure it's some factory somewhere or maybe they're just strings he buys and repackages who knows who cares let's talk about some of the things billy does that makes his guitar playing so unique billy does a lot of his uh lead stuff in in open g tuning or an open tuning of some type g is pretty common for zz top most of their music is in e standard tuning but billy tunes a lot of his guitars to open g especially when he does slide um, you know any type of slide work now that song, I was just starting to play. The... What happened? I don't know. Nationwide. That's one of my favorite ZZ Top songs. If you're driving down the road and that comes on the radio, you just got to turn it up, right? Billy's Billy's playing is pretty simple. Most of the, I, I don't mean easy. What I mean by simple is it's not overcomplicated, and he's he's very smart as far as knowing when to play and when not to play. He lets the music breathe. Uh, a lot of guys out there just want to play a million notes a second and. I tend to shy away from some of those players, even though a lot of them are incredible. Their ability is just out of this world. But sometimes just knowing when to play and when not to play makes you t 10 times better than if you just played over top of everything all the time. You know, there's other guys in the band. Let them, let them shine a little bit, too. Us guitar players tend to want to haul the spotlight all the time. But anyway, let's talk about some ZZ Top riffs, because that's why we're here, right? Yep. First one I want to talk about is Cheap Sunglasses. Now, you've heard this song. We've all heard this song. And as a kid, I always imagined, you know, they were probably hung over one day and wanted to get some sunglasses so they can get on down the road. But it goes like this.
try the, uh, the bridge pickup. That's a little muddy on the neck. Great tune right there. Always liked that one. Um, the first time I heard that song, I, I can remember it pretty clearly. I was about 13 years old, and it came on the radio. And that was just before, I guess it was just after uh, Eliminator came out. When the album Eliminator came out, it changed everything for ZZ Top. You know, that's when they made their first music video. They really didn't know what they were doing, you know, with all the hand gestures and stuff like that. They were just doing it to be goofy, but it caught on and it really made them popular. Uh, the hot rods that you see in the videos for that album, uh, they, they do belong to Billy. He's a huge hot rod collector and builder, does all that stuff, you know. I don't know if he does it all himself or if he has them built. doesn't matter because the guy's got a heck of a good taste in cars. You see some of them old caddies and stuff that he has. They are just smoking hot looking. I, I love some of his old cars. But anyway, we're here to talk about guitars and riffs, not cars. It's funny how some of them rock guys, uh, they're, they're collectors of hot rods. It seems to go, seems to go uh, quite a long ways in that world. A lot of them guys collect guitars and cars, and I guess when you have that kind of disposable income, you can collect whatever the hell you want, right? I collect debt. That's what I collect. But anyway, moving right along, the next song I want to talk about is Waiting for the Bus. Now this song always been one of my favorites. And they go right out of this song into uh, Jesus Just Left Chicago. But Waiting for the Bus goes like this. there I'm sure you've heard that one before and um, that's one of the first ZZ Top songs that I heard that wasn't on Eliminator I mean the first ZZ Top I ever heard was probably Legs or Give Me All Your Lovin' or something like that um, because that's about the time Eliminator came out is the time I was really starting to develop my own taste in music and things like that and of course I had the album because I liked some of them songs then but like some of some of them songs are just so overplayed like give me all your loving i don't ever want to hear that song again tush same thing don't want to hear it anymore another one they play a lot on the radio is lagrange but that's a tasty tune it's it's still okay i haven't heard it that many times that i don't want to hear it anymore but he does a lot of hybrid picking and uh lagrange goes like this <laughs> Uh, with him using that coin, he gets a lot of really cool metallic -y sounds off of his pick. He does a lot of, um, you hear a lot of false harmonics in the little lead runs he does. <laughs> where you get your th little bit of your thumb in on the on the note and it just changes the way the note sounded he does that a lot that's another one of his little signature moves there um, most of the stuff he plays is is pentatonic he mixes the minor and major sticks mostly to minor pentatonic but he does mix that major in there there's a lot of blue guy blues guys do uh, just really changes the way your 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 song sounds by adding a few few major notes from the major pentatonic scale in there. Next song I want to talk about 
because uh, out of, out of um, waiting for the bus goes into Jesus just left Chicago, and it goes like this. <laughs> thing Billy does in a lot of his songs you'll hear this. That was LaGrange again, but I forgot to mention it while I was playing it. But there you go. Um, <clears throat> Billy has some pretty interesting stuff in his life. His early bands uh, he went to Warner Brothers Art School and got his first guitar when he was 13. And he was in a few bands before ZZ Top. Uh, one of them was called The Saints. There was one called The Coachman. And there was one called Billy G and the Blue Flames. That's a hell of a name, isn't it? Billy G and the Blue Flames. But Billy's most famous band prior to ZZ Top was The Moving Sidewalks. Uh, now, in 1969, they recorded a song called Flash that gained some popularity. And the Moving Sidewalks actually opened uh, some shows for Jimi Hendrix, which is how they got popular. But Hendrix said Billy Gibbons is the next up-and-coming guitar player. He's the one to keep his eye on. Hendrix was right, because most people underestimate Billy because they hear Tush. But listen to some of his earlier stuff. Yeah, the Trace Hombres album, that's one of the best albums out there. Killer album. And another, another song off that album that I really like is called Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers. It goes like this. up he does there a little chromatic run he's a pretty tasty guitar player if you've never heard any of ZZ Top besides you know the songs you heard on MTV back when they had music go check them out listen to like Trace Hombres that's a great album um, they have a lot of goofy song titles too like they have a song called TV Dinners it goes like this <laughs> song just a groovy little tune they have another one that's named poke chop sandwich p-o-k-e not pork poke poke chop sandwich i always thought i was kind of funny billy's not afraid to be adventurous with his song names and his playing and he is one hell of a guitar player but moving right along probably my favorite zz top riff of all time is just got paid and a lot of guys covered that. I know Joe Bonamassa does a, a version of it. And I think the song, uh, I think Billy is actually tuned to open G for that song because he does a lot of slide work. But I'm tuned to E standard, so I have to play it a little bit different. But it goes like this. <laughs> Thank you. 
probably my favorite all times easy talk song right there that one and um beer drinkers and hell raisers don't know why i just like them tunes a lot but moving right along this song you've heard a million times it's just a really weird riff billy uses a lot of pedal notes uh, <laughs> Which is where you're, you know, playing something up here and he keeps bouncing. Some guys call them drone notes, pedal notes, whatever you want to call them. There's a little bug in here flying around. Um, sharp dressed man. I mean, the song's tired, it's old. You've heard it a million times, but the riff's cool. It goes like this. Nope, it goes like this. pedal notes is he's hitting this note here. He does a lot of that stuff in his playing, one of the things that makes him so unique. <clears throat> but anyway, guys, I don't want to take up all your time today. I just wanted to hang out a little bit and talk about the Reverend Willie G for a few minutes. Go listen to some old ZZ Top. If you're not real familiar with their old material, start with the album Trace Hombres. You can't miss it. There's a bunch of videos on YouTube, uh, lyric videos and such. Uh, the cover's almost all green, but a small picture in the center. You can't miss it, guys. Thanks for hanging with me, though. I appreciate you guys watching my videos. They're always fun to make. And if you're still here watching, go ahead and hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. I certainly appreciate it. Go check out some of my other Player Spotlight series videos. And if you have any ideas on who I should do next, don't be afraid to put it in the comments. Till next time, guys. Thanks for watching. See ya.